So I'm okay with the followers and the views that I have because it means that I'm ready for them right now. So I look and I analyze, how do I just double up on the one that did good and, and see slowly but surely. Now, of course, we're gonna go viral here and there and I always want to give the best out of it. But the, the main thing is, do I know my audience? If I know my audience, do I know the pain point? If I know the pain point, what are the words that I'm putting in that first two seconds that will get their attention? I don't like turning on the camera. It gives me anxiety. My introverts are like, hold on, tell me more. I don't have to create video ever again in my life. Hold on, tell me more. This is how to go viral. Hold up, tell me more. Why? Because I know my audience. If, you're, if your data and your videos and your content is not working, you don't know your audience as well as you think you do. Invest fast, what's going on? Woo-wee! Goodness gracious. Y'all know what happened? 4,000 first year, 4,000. Then 14,000. Then 20,000. Growth. Growth. Are y'all growing like that? After this, y'all growing like that? I don't care what you did last year, but we're going to double it this year, am I right? I don't care what you did last year, we're going to double it this year, right? You made 50,000 last year, we're going to do what this year? We made 100,000 last year, we're going to do what this year? Y'all don't even believe it, do you? Y'all don't believe it, do you? Do you? All right, we about to get started. Listen, I need you to have your notebook ready, okay? Because we about to really give some practical games, some real information on how to grow on social media. How many people are super nervous about social media? You don't like posting. You don't know what to post. You don't know how often to post. We're going to get through all of that, okay? All right, y'all got your notebooks? How you taking notes? With your pen and paper? Old school? Okay, let me see how you taking notes. With your phone? All right, we got some information. Yo, thank y'all so much for being here, man. I'm really, really excited about this conversation. Primarily because, can I be real with y'all? We family, right? Can I, can I be real? Y'all not gonna judge me, right? Talk about it. I'm on social media every day, mm. but I absolutely hate social media. I hate almost everything about it. I hate the posting, I hate making something and hoping that it gets a lot of engagement or you put some stuff up, it gets some engagement, but don't nobody buy nothing. And I feel like my, 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 my posting is repetitive. I hate it. Am I the only one? But I can't hate it too much because I make a lot of money from it. So I just, let's just start this off. Can we be honest? How do you feel about social media? Let's start with you, Nikki. I feel like it's a tool. It's not a lifestyle, it's not a job. It's a tool to make us go global. So I don't even put that much pressure on it. I just treat it like it's something that's gonna show the world who I am. And that's it. I don't give it that much more pressure. If I do, then I'll hate it. Then I won't like posting about it. But I understand the bigger purpose for it which is brand awareness, which is making sure that my products and services are out there, make sure that it impacts the people. And I just give it that much power and it lets me be free. I like that, Chris, talk to me. What are your feelings? Um, I think that people don't utilize social media to the fullest uh, capability that they have. A lot of people talk about other people's money as leverage, but media is the ultimate leverage. So with media, you're able to organically reach millions of people without having to spend any money on ads. So social media to me is like the greatest tool and the greatest invention for your business. And not only to acquire customers, but to acquire talent to work inside of your company. It's the reason why the top celebrities and entrepreneurs have the best people because they're able to reach out and market to the best people to work in their companies. Dante, talk to me. I believe we can all agree that social media, we all have a love and hate relationship with it, right? Facts. We have to also realize that social media has never existed before. There's never before been a time where you can shoot, edit, distribute, build brands on top of it, and make as much money as you possibly can. There's never before been a time where you could reach the brands that you wanted to work with. Back in the day, you would have to pay millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to attract that type of attention. But now it gives us all an ability to be able to tell our own unique stories, to connect with those people who want to hear our stories and be heard. I like that. All right, so 
I want to start, I want to start slow. We got some time, right? We don't got to rush it because there's some people out here that they're just confused about what to post, right? So let's say somebody has 300 followers, 400 followers. They have this goal to get to 100,000 followers because they think, whatever that means, whatever they think 100,000 is going to do for them, they think it's going to happen. How do we start to grow? What are some of the first conversations we need to have with ourselves when we're approaching, okay, I want to be a brand online. These are some of the first steps that I should take. Let's start with you, Chris. Um, the first steps that I would take would be to realize that you're building a catalog. When you first get on social media and you don't have a following, you want to get as much bingeable content on your platform as possible. So let's say you wanted to get a six pack and you went to the gym and you did a one sit up. You did the right action, but it wasn't the right amount of reps. So the same thing with social media. A lot of people, they do the right thing. They just don't post enough on social media. And then once you start to post, uh, I like an 80-20 split. So 80% evergreen content, content that lasts forever and that is timeless. And then 20% uh, current events. When those current events, uh, articles that you get, you could get them on Wall Street Journal, Barron's, uh, you could get them on Bloomberg. It should be very uh, inside of your niche. You don't want to go and expand too quickly. You want to stay and niche down because there's riches and niches. And then uh, you would see a lot of traction coming from those uh, news posts. But how do you know how to niche down? I mean, what, what, like, explain. Can someone explain niching down to me on social media? I, I like what you said there, Chris. You have to put in the reps to figure out social media. But let's take it a step back. You said if you have 300 to 400 followers, I'm going to look at it as the first day ever I downloaded social media. We don't know about algorithms. We don't know about all the bells and whistles that come with social media. All we know is we're supposed to post, follow people and things that we're interested in, and hope that it all comes together. And let's be honest. You put up a post, it gets five likes. You wonder why your closest friends and family members aren't liking it. You think that the algorithm hates you, and there's no way to figure this out. Who feels that way? Who feels that way? Oh, no, hands up. Wow, we can see him because I felt the same way. And when it comes down to social media, let's take it a step back. When we talk about niching down, figure out what you're most passionate about. Because if you go onto social media, we all consume content, whether it's television, movies, or social media, and we get inspired immediately. And we say, I'm going to go do that. Then we come to figure out, you know what? I'm actually not the best at this, but that's okay. Pen to paper, I want everybody to think about what are the four things that you're most passionate about? There's no limits to this. Whatever limiting beliefs people told you that you can't be a magician, you can't be a real estate investor, get that out the door. This is you versus you. So write down what you're most passionate about because that's how you find your niches. That's when you figure out what you're most passionate about. When you start producing content that you're happy about, you're genuinely having fun with it. But now what? We start posting content aimlessly, and we, again, we're not getting the likes, we're not getting the comments or followers out of it. Now, go on the platform and find people within the things you're passionate about that are posting things and look at their successes. Wow, this is something that I can actually obtain. That's the perspective I think that we all need. Follow those pages, see what they're doing, and create genuine conversations in there. From there, use platforms like Google Trends, YouTube, TikTok, and search it up. If your niche is cooking, fashion, technology, unboxing, just type those one words into the keyword search bar. And guess what? They'll show you exactly what are the most popular videos. There's a book that's called Still Like an Artist. Doesn't mean that you have to copy what people are doing, but take about six things from other people and then apply your own unique values to it. I think that we get overwhelmed and we think that we need the expensive $3,000 cameras. You're like, if only I had this lens, if only I had this microphone. Two years ago, when I hopped in front of the camera after running my production company, I knew I wanted to teach people how to create and build a brand off of just their phones. You wouldn't believe it. I'd bring my iPhone everywhere. Security won't trip off of it. And it's those practicalities that if you remove yourself what everybody else is doing and just work with what you got, that's the best way to start. Nikki, what do you think about when it comes down to like putting First together? First off, I'm asking the questions around hey. here. Hey! <laughs> Let me go, let me, let me go, let me go. First off, let's just lay, lay some ground rules, okay? I asked the questions. I, you answered it. I'm just playing. <laughs> let me, let me go. Let me make it a little bit more simpler from what you said. So we really have to first focus on what do we want to be known for, right? So if I Google y'all, 
right? What is the content that's gonna come up and does it really represent who you are, right? So we first have to think about when I get Googled, what do I wanna be known for? Second, you gotta act as your natural self. Who are my introverts in the building? Shout out to y'all. Where are my extroverts at? Hey, yeah, there you are, oh, there you are, come on, hey! So, how many of y'all, especially for my introverts, feel like you have to be extroverts on social media? And this is why you're not consistent, because you're acting as if you're not who you really are, right? So I always say at 3.47 in the morning, cold in your eye, if I wake you up and say, hey, I got a crowd for you, and I need you to create content in either video, audio, written, or photo, what would be your natural way of creating, right? Everybody scream out what would be your natural way? Video, audio, photo, or audio? Wait, audio, video, written, photo. How many, what would be y'alls? And why are y'all not doing it every day? You feel me? Because it's 3.47 in the morning, you're not thinking. But when it's 10 o'clock in the morning, now all of a sudden we're thinking. And we're like overthinking. We're like, nah, hold on. Let me... Uh, but when you like, you have called it, all right, hold on. So let me add this value to you real quick. All right, and I'm done. So really when it comes to starting out and figuring out how to grow, we have to be our natural self first and foremost, get in a rhythm with that. And then, okay, let me get into the trends. Let me get into Google, let me start typing it out. Let me start going into chat GPT, write out some of my pain points and things like that. But if we don't know who we are and our natural selves first, it means nothing. Um, let's talk about like the platforms, okay? So my favorite platform is YouTube, and then next would be Instagram, and then, I mean like everything else. I'm focused on YouTube, first off, because that, it makes you money. And, and I think YouTube is cool because it's easier, I think it's easier to be discovered. I may be right, I may be wrong, but um, you could just type in a search and you can get in the way of somebody's search. So what, what platform do you think right now is the easiest to grow? Or, or does that question even exist? I'll probably say TikTok is the easiest to grow on. The reason is because TikTok judges your content rather than the followers that you have. And whenever you start on TikTok, it's always short form videos. I like to run short form videos as like ads. It's like, okay, if you like my content in 60 seconds, you'll really love my content when I sit on YouTube for like 10 minutes. And don't you gotta dance on TikTok though? I can't dance, I got white rhythm. You so said you can't get into it? I'm saying, do you gotta dance on TikTok? No, you don't have to dance on TikTok at all. You can, um, whatever your niche is or whatever business you're in, there is always more people like you in the world than you think that there is. So a lot of people, they'll think like, oh, when I hear TikTok, I think I have to dance. Like, no. You are the only person in the world that could be you, so nobody could create the content that you create. So you can never have competition if you're true and authentic to who you are. And that's when most people go wrong on social media. Now, if you got to pick one social media that you would live by, and you can't be on anything else, what would it be? What would you pick? If there could be one social media that I could live on and pick nothing else, that's a tough question. Because we really don't know which platform is going to be around for the longest. But if we look at which one has delivered on a creator standpoint, all the pain points that we want is definitely YouTube. Because there's never been a social media platform where I felt the community is so strong. On TikTok, I feel like how many of us never just swipe over to who we're following? We just scroll on the FYP page. That's me. <laughs> on Instagram, sometimes I feel like I'm not even able to see the people who I follow. But when it comes down to YouTube, I'm always getting hit in the comments, notification squad. We hear they start in conversations and it's really strong that way. And like you said, you can monetize it, long form, short form. Now they're offering YouTube shorts. There's different ways that you can create within that social media platform. I love it, Nikki, you could pick one. I would have to say YouTube, but Instagram is my boo. I'm not gonna lie, okay? Instagram is my boo. The reason why I feel like YouTube, you have to have, and it feels like it, you have to have that super edited situation for it to really go. You have to be intentional with how you are retaining the people to watch the whole thing or YouTube won't really like your stuff and push it out there. 
Where Instagram, you kind of feel a little bit looser because you start off with short form. Now I do say, start off with short, end up with long. Because with short form, we can't really find you. But with long form, if we say, yo, the best chef in Atlanta, the best dentist in Atlanta, then your name, your content is gonna come up. So I do say, feel comfortable with short, and that may be on TikTok, that may be on Instagram, but then go on long form from YouTube, which then cuts into shorts, because that's where the money is, right? That's where, but you could get brand deals off TikTok. You could get brand deals off of uh, Instagram. I hope we talk about that. But I would, I would say YouTube from a long perspective, but Instagram and TikTok from a short term. I like that. And Chris, very, very interesting. Y'all ever seen Chris before? Y'all don't know him, do you? Pay, pay attention to his face. Take a picture of his face now. So, he kind of important. So I, I didn't know this, um, but Chris is who posts on the Earn Your Leisure page. And Clap it I up want, for him. Clap it up. Yeah, for sure. So all that stuff you love, you think it's Troy and Rashad, and it's that guy, right? But between you and Rashad, y'all post the most on Earn Your Leisure's page, right? Yeah. But walk me through, I thought, I thought it was very interesting. He has a dope routine um, that I'm actually gonna steal, but share, for real. So share like your routine as you're approaching building out the Earn Your Leisure page. Okay, yeah, so again, I say, I said it earlier, I like an 80-20 split, evergreen content, and then 20% of current events, right? So whenever it's an episode like Assets Over Liabilities, Market Mondays, whenever it's um, an episode or anybody from the network, what I'll do is I like to post our content. But when I post their content, instead of like just making uh, like a few videos, I go through every single time that any guest talk and any speaker talks on there and I'll clip it all up. So I'll never have to go back to it. And then I'll create the, the headlines for it. The headlines are the most important thing because it's the first- I'm sorry, real quick, I gotta touch on this. So did y'all see the episode where I interviewed Earn Your Leisure about InvestFest? Did y'all see that? That's it? <laughs> just, just fake it for him. Everybody yeah, saw yeah. it? Move, moving right along, okay? So this one interview, I want to say it was maybe an hour. Was it about an hour? About an hour? He sent me over a folder with 60 clips in it. 60 clips. I thought that was powerful. How did you pull 60 clips? And how are you approaching this long form? Any podcasters here where you make long form content? Finding 60. I was just talking to somebody on my team. He was like, yo, on my videos, they pull like seven. And uh, somebody's about to get fired, first off, or you need to step it up. But 60 clips out of one conversation. Talk to me about that. All right, so when I first started off, I used to do it all by hand. And this thing called AI happened, right? So my favorite website outside of ChatGPT is video.ai, V-I-D-Y-O.ai. V I D, y'all writing it down? You're not even writing it down. Look at you. Write it down. V I D Y O dot A I. So I like using that because I could put the entire uh, uh, podcast on there. It's an hour long. And I don't like the way that they break up the reels, but I like the chapters that they have. So once I start to edit it, I don't like to use the edits on there because I like to I have a certain style that I use but it'll section off the video. So I'll like, all right, this section is about this, this is about that. And then from there, I'll download those videos to my computer or laptop, and then I'll edit them. And then when I edit them, I think of, okay, who is watching? Everybody. Some people may like this, so I'm gonna clip it. Any content, I'm trying to get the most amount of content for them because they're extremely busy. So we're posting like four times, five times a day, on like multiple platforms. So I need as much content as possible. So that's why I like anything that is said, I clip it up because it may touch somebody. I don't know who it's gonna touch. I'm sorry, that the, the, the app that you said, you put the video in and it cuts out the clips itself? Yeah, it, it, cu it cuts it out in chapters. So oh, I'm really firing my whole team. Why do, why do I need them? Oh, I got, I got more for you. I got more for you. <laughs> so video AI is a dope one, right? Opus clip is another one and get munch. And get munch is really dope because it gives you actual keywords and how it's trending. So with those three things, you could probably fire your whole team. So I'm just playing. I love I'm you, I love you. 
I'll, I'll just I got you. you. I got you. I got you. We're good. We're so good. So he yeah. said. So he said video AI, right? Opus clip. O P U S C L I P. Opus clip. And the third one is get munch, not ice spice. Get munch. It's time to stop running your business like a hustler, like just somebody that's trying to go get some money and run your business like an actual business owner. You know how that happens? Your business hires you. Even though you started the business, the business hires you and you put yourself on payroll. And that business has payroll for other people. Now, those other people might be your spouse. It could be your kids. I pay my daughter $12,000 a year because that $12,000 that I pay my child isn't taxed. So that money is either going to go to your child or it's going to go to the government. You decide. I'd rather keep it in my house. My wife is on payroll. You need to run your business like a business owner. Most of you are taking money from your business and you take that money and you pay your house loan, you pay your rent, you pay your car. For one, that kind of stuff will land you in jail. But two, you want to grow and lay a strong foundation for your business to grow on, okay? So go to adp.com forward slash social proof. When I signed up for ADP to get this process going, I had to pay $250 for administration, setup fee, all these costs. I talked to my ADP sales rep and they said they will waive it for you if you go to adp.com forward slash social proof, meaning you can start this process for free. Absolutely free. No catches, no hooks. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. Now is the time to run your business like an actual business owner. I am on ADP. I do the same thing and it helps my books by tax time. I'm not behind. I'm not trying to get everything because in the process of them making the payroll, they take out the taxes, they structure everything. And at the end of the year, voila, you give that information to your CPA. Okay. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. One more time, adp.com forward slash social proof. Set it up for free. Let's go. I was about to say, there's kids here. What are you talking about? All right, so so walk me through the apps, like what you do with the apps. They yeah, do the so, same thing? So it's similar to him, right? So you could take your YouTube video, right, the link of it, or upload it from your hard drive, your computer, and it clips it up. So like, Get Munch will do about 30 clips, right? Damn fly. But uh, it will be doing about 30 clips. Video AI does like as many as it can do. Opus Clips picks about a good 30, and it gives you the viral score. So we'll pick, like it'll tell you number one, and it's like 100 uh, virality score, 90 virality score, 80 virality score. So you can pick. Oh, wow. And it, it gives you the same, like, Alex Hermosi captions, emojis, all of that. And all of them do that. I like Opus Clip a little bit more based off the selection that it does. Now, majority of us are creators, so we don't necessarily like the style of it. But for my regular nine to five and entrepreneurs, y'all not going to care is going to pick exactly what you need. You can upload it to every content, every platform, and it's gonna do amazing. Chris, we're, com we're coming right back to the rest of that. Clap, clap that up, that's good. We're gonna come right back to that. So don't lose your train of thought, okay? Dante, are you in the AI game? Are you using AI tools? I am using AI tools more for the pre-production side. So ChatGPT, if I'm stuck and I can't figure out any video ideas, I'll give it a prompt around whatever categories that I want to make and see if it has any ideas that I can just come to mind. In terms of editing... I'm Hold on, I'm sorry. You use G chat GPT to come up with the ideas to create the content? Yes. Walk, walk me through that process. Just kind of break that down for me, come slow. So I'll use chat GPT and I organize all of my content strategy in Notion. Notion has built in AI as well. Chat GPT, I might type in something like, what are 30 video ideas that you can give for a beginner videographer, and it'll spit out some ideas. What? Hold on, pop quiz. What app did he say he uses? Okay, you're paying attention. You're doing good over there. All right, go ahead. And we can go further with that. You can use ChatGPT to type up video scripts for you, or you can utilize it to give you certain prompts. Let's say you love writing and you do your own script. Put it into ChatGPT and ask it to make it more simplified so the audiences that are watching it is more consumable and that way you can create snackable content. That's good. I was like, put us in the game, put us in the game. Yes, Chris going, got one going. and I got one. Yeah. 
that, that's one uh, skill and strategy that I like to use. So <clears throat> whenever people shoot ads and things like that, sometimes they'll try to use big words to sound intelligent when the best way to get conversions on your ads is actually to um, transcribe it on Autodata AI, put it inside of ChatGBT and say, hey, can you simplify this on a fourth grade level? Once you do that, it's way easier because the true skill of uh, mastery of a topic is saying it in the most simplest way possible that anybody can consume it. That's good. Is this good, y'all? Yeah, Lee. Oh, hold on, I got another one. I got uh, one more. I got yes, one more. Please. So, who has, okay, ChatGPT Plus, for those people who don't have the paid version, there's this plugin that's called Summarize, and it has a little ninja. If you get inspired by a YouTube video, because we all watch YouTube University, you can put a link in ChatGPT, tell it to summarize it, and then say, create a whole new reel based off what I just saw, a whole new TikTok based off what I just saw. Give me 10 more ideas based off that. So, and if you don't have the, and if you don't have the paid version, you can go and get it transcribed through Otter, right? Otter AI, or Otter, yeah, Otter AI. Spell right? it, spell it. O-T-T-E-R, okay? And get it transcribed, and then take that transcription into ChatGPT, and it could do the same thing. Yo, what happened to the days where I could just like pick up my phone and just start talking? We can't do that no yeah, more. No, you can do that. That's amazing. But some people just need some help, need some extra help. And so, even if, like, let's say you have a script, right? Pick up your phone, like, yeah, I just want to talk to it, but I forgot my train of thought. There's this really dope app called Captions. How many of y'all heard that app, Captions? Okay, some of y'all. Yeah, I'm about to help y'all, right? So one, not only does it do the closed captions, the Alex Hermosi things, of course, but it has a teleprompter so that you could type out your script and so when you press record, everything that you need to say is right there. Right on your phone as right you're recording it. Right on your phone, it. okay? Oh, so it looks like you're looking at your phone, but right. you're really reading. Now, let's say you look away real quick, right? You lose your train of thought. It has AI that keeps your eyes at the camera. So you could look down and it still has you looking up. And if you, and if you don't have a video script, it could do a video script right in, through AI, right on the cap, in the caption app. Oh, we talking good. Goodness, great. Talk heavy, people, <laughs> talk heavy, talk heavy. How many people are being, are being set free right now? Okay. <laughs> Okay, back to you, Chris. So um, you were talking about your process of going, like you wake up and you go to these different articles and all that kind of stuff. Um, walk me through that. Like you, you said you go through like the articles and you're trying to find what to post yes. for the Earn Your Leisure page. Walk me through that process. Okay, so um, before you do this, you need to really know the identity of your brand. And you need to know the types of stories that your audiences will like. So I'll give you an example of last week. Last week, Cam and Mace, they signed an eight-figure deal for their podcast, Is What It Is, right? We have a hip-hop community inside of Earning Leisure um, because they've been able to mix pop culture with investing, right? So posts like that, I already know, once that goes up, that's literally the brand. Um, so what I'll do is I'll look for the articles. I'll, uh, it'll be like 5 a.m., and I, like the easiest way to do it is I go to Bloomberg sometimes. I go to like the five most shared articles. I'll click it. Um, I have a, not a plugin. It's more so um, a chat in, um, in ChatGBT that I've already trained to give me like the best summary of an article to kind of help create like uh, descriptions or titles and things of that nature. And then I'll put it inside of there. It'll give me like the, the uh, caption. It'll give me the title. And then I'll uh, create a graphic for it, the most like gravitating graphic, because a lot of people don't realize that it has to be appealing to see the article. It can't just be like boring. So like colors, the type of font you use is important. Um, I love the I love the post with carousels. So it's just like different ways that you have to play with it, and they perform really well. Good, good. I think one of the biggest issues that people have is the ability to be consistent. So I want to ask a two-part question to everybody, and I'll start with you, Dante. How many times per day do you recommend someone posting? 
if they're taking this thing seriously and they w really want to build a brand online? I believe in quality over quantity. Some people might tell you to post one time a day, once every other week, three times a day. Find the rhythm that works for you and don't let the content consume you. It could be so easy to get trapped in following what other people are doing. I think at scale, once you have a larger brand, it's okay to post three or five times a day because now those posts that you're putting out is gonna get distributed much more further because you have a larger audience. But if you're smaller, focus on that quality aspect. Try it once a day if you can. Try it once, a, once other every other day. And after 30 days of posting, go ahead and just look back at the data and figure out how did these perform? If you had one that blew up, figure out why it blew up. Was it the song I used, the hook? And use that as a strategy to be able to create content for the next content you're coming up with. Okay, what if we did it for 30 days and none of them blew up? They're all trash. Like we get no, it's just nobody's liking my stuff. Talk to me about that, okay? Sometimes, I got y'all, I got y'all. <laughs> sometimes we all have the pieces in front of us, but we're not putting them in the right places. For example, for me, I was putting out my content and I thought it was amazing. So did some people who were able to find it and it was getting 500 views, then it got to 5,000, but then it hit that ceiling. I talked to friends that were around me and I asked them questions. I said, what do you guys think about my content? One of my friends has 5 million followers on TikTok and he said, you have to focus on your formatting. It's all wrong. And this is, goes back to that puzzle analogy. So what do you mean it's all wrong? I thought it was good and I think that's our ego getting in the way. But he said, focus on your hook. That first zero to two seconds truly matters. There's all this dead space where you're not talking, the video's too lengthy, shorten it down so it loops and it's more consumable. Sure enough, as soon as I did that, the same piece of content that got 5,000 views got 5 million views just because I changed the hook. Mm, that's good, clap that up. First two seconds. So we need to have something impactful in the first two seconds. It could be as simple as a text. I like to say that it's a speed bump. When you're scrolling on social media, and you're scrolling down, what's gonna catch your attention? We don't really read captions anymore, but we'll see the big text bumper that pops up that you can add on any app, whether it's TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or Instagram. That's a speed bump that's gonna stop people to figure out, okay, what's going on? But a hook really has to have that wow factor. If you're selling something, if you're educating somebody, what is it that's gonna make people stick around until the end? It's like a good movie that you watch. It starts, then boom, something happens with the main character. Now you're drawn into the story and you have to watch it. Nikki, I've been posting for a month, nothing's happening. Two months, Damn. none of this stuff is going. Damn. What are you checking for first? I'm checking for shares. If we're talking, so there's a few things I'm checking for. If I'm talking about Instagram, I'm talking, I'm looking at shares and saves, right? I'm, I don't expect everybody to comment on my stuff, right? We're in a society that all we do is scroll, right? That doesn't mean they don't see our stuff. That just doesn't mean we made them stop and necessarily say anything, right? Did we even ask them to comment on our stuff? We're expecting comments, but have we even asked them? So I'm looking for shares and saves. Saves because it may have been so valuable that they're just waiting it for, for later, right? But that doesn't mean they commented on it, doesn't mean they liked it, but I gotta go back to it because it was so dope, right? Also, I'm also checking myself because how do I know it's not successful? Am I comparing it to other people's numbers instead of what I feel that should be, right? So meaning, if I've done 30 days of content, 90 days of content, there's something that did hit. Now, did it hit millions? No. But did it hit more than the others? Yes, so I need to double down on that. I need to look, what's the hook? I need to look, what's the caption? I need to look, what's the format? I need to look and dissect what's the topic and double down on that to see if I can go, okay, could I get 100 more likes? Could I get a more, uh, 100 more views? Could I get, I'm not going, oh, nothing worked because I didn't get thousands of followers, thousands of views or anything like that. I gotta be realistic. If I'm at 100 followers, I gotta be okay with getting 100 views. I gotta be okay with, cause that's 100% that's accuracy right there. 100 followers, 100 views. Oh, I'm doing good. And let's be honest, have I ever met any of these people that see my stuff? Any of my followers, if I put them in my house, would I get anxiety? Like, I probably would. So I'm okay with the followers and the views that I have because it means that I'm ready for them right now. So I look and I analyze, how do I just double up 
on the one that did good and, and see slowly but surely. Now, of course, we're gonna go viral here and there and, the, and I always want to give the best out of it, but the, the main thing is, do I know my audience? If I know my audience, do I know the pain point? If I know the pain point, what are the words that I'm putting in that first two seconds that will get their attention, right? I don't like, uh, I don't like turning on the camera. It gives me anxiety. My introverts are like, hold on, tell me more. I don't have to create video ever again in my life. Hold on, tell me more, right? This is how to go viral. Hold up, tell me more. Why? Because I know my audience. If, you're, if your data and your videos and your content is not working, you don't know your audience as well as you think you do. Mm, okay, I, that's good, that's good. So, Chris, let's say, for instance, um, Earn Your Leisure, Rashad Choi, Mike, the whole team, they come to you today. They are not Earn Your Leisure today, but today they come to you. You gotta build a brand from scratch, okay? And they come to you and say, hey, we wanna influence the hip hop community in, uh, uh, in the financial space. This is our audience, we know who we're talking to. In this meeting, this initial meeting, before we even have a bunch of followers, what are some of the conversations you're gonna have with them in the starting phase? The beginning of building a brand is one of the most hardest but fun time periods, right? Because you have the idea, you have the direction that you wanna go, but you just don't have the influence in the platform. So as you're building it, you wanna make sure that that initial post that you make, like the first 30 posts, is actually true to your brand. Because you could get a viral video that uh, give you uh, millions of, uh, of views, but if they're not rocking with your core brand, then you won't be able to influence them to do anything else outside of just follow you. So it's like, it's looking for those people. Like sometimes I think that we, um, we're not grateful for having 300 people watch our video, but if 300 people came to an event, you'll be happy. But we, it's like social media distorts our like um, reality because you're like, okay, I see they're doing 10,000, they're doing 20. You have to run your race and just, as long as you have one person watching your content consistently commenting, then that means you know what you have work. You just have to find the rest of that, of those avatars that you have, right? So just keep putting out the content, be consistent. I think consistency is the biggest thing that we take for granted. And that's the really the biggest driving factors of all brands. Um, my favorite statistic ever is, um, it came from an episode of Market Mondays. They had Big Boy on. I'm gonna ask y'all this question. How long do you think- First off, I told him earlier, okay? <laughs> I asked the questions around I'm here. The, I'm the good okay, one. Give me, I'm the good give me, one. Give me the question. Let's see if this it's good question. or not. This is the question. How long does it take to grow a YouTube channel to 100K subscribers? That's subjective. It's right, hold it, first off. I was like, I thought he was asking I got, you. I got, I got a question. I got a question for you. How long does it take to grow a YouTube channel? Come on. Come on. Flip that. To 100,000 subscribers. You know what I mean? Profound. Dante, we'll start with such you. Such a profound question. <laughs> That's subjective because it could happen overnight or it could happen over the course of five years. But I think, like you were saying, Chris, too many people live in the micro and they, they judge their day-to-day -day what's going on. This video got hit with 100,000 views, so I'm expecting all of them to hit 100,000 views. Then the next day it does five, the next one does 100. Some people might wanna give up. But you have to look how far you've came in 12 months. If you started a YouTube channel, if you came to InvestFest, you gotta pat yourself on the back because you took that leap of faith. Most people will be fearful of that. For you, just believing in yourself is amazing. So now we, we look back and we go, where did I come from in five years ago? What can I accomplish in five years? Two years ago, I wasn't stepping in front of the camera. Two years ago, I wasn't on this stage at InvestFest, but because of social media and believing in myself, I was able to make that happen. And I do believe that everybody can make that happen. Hey, come on, make some noise like you gonna be on this stage in two years. Make some noise like you gonna go from where you are right now to being on this stage two years from now. I like that, I like that, go for it. So. After they did the study, they found out that time was the wrong variable. The average 100,000 subscriber YouTube channel had 1,000 posts. Woo! It's the wrong variable. We think it's a time thing when it's a rep thing. And that's the most underrated thing. It's like, even if you look at the major leagues, right? Run if that you back, run 30... that back, run that back. I don't think they heard that. Run that back. Please run that back. <laughs> um, it's the wrong variable. So. If you bet 30%, uh, if you bet 30% uh, in the major leagues, you go to the Hall of Fame. 
a lot of people think that every content is supposed to stick. You only need one to blow. So you really only need one and your life could change very, very quickly in a month or even a year. That's good. That's, That's a fact. Good. I've been on YouTube since 2012 and I didn't hit 100,000 subscribers until YouTube Shorts came out. And it was because two videos that went viral on TikTok and Instagram. And I said, you know what? Let's see if we could do viral again on YouTube Shorts. Sure enough, it did. And that's what got me to 100,000 subscribers. You're absolutely right. That's good. Nick, you had something to share on that? Listen, they got it. I, I, I don't <laughs> mess with greatness. You got it. All right. I, I want to. Um, so we're, we're talking about consistency. And we tell people, I know often I tell people, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent. You got to be what? But they have no idea what that means. I think we know what it means in terms of we have to keep doing something, but I still even think consistency needs a strategy. So if someone's not being consistent, yeah. I'll come to you, and then I'll come to you, Chris. What are some like some one, two, three steps mm -hmm. that can kind of ensure some incons consistency or help somebody with that? So first off, consistency, let's do this. How many of y'all think consistency means every day? Raise your hand. I don't want to raise my Y'all lying. Too. There's more. Don't do that. <laughs> so consistency is not every single day. It's what you promise the audience that you're going to show up. Okay? So if we think about sitcoms, right, and shows, they only show up once a week. We're, like, religious on watching them. Boom. They have a whole community. They don't have to post. They don't have to show up every single day. Why? Because they focus on quality or quantity, right? So... We have to first make a commitment on how often are we going to show up. Once we do that, then we got to realize what are we going to post. I don't have to post video audio. I don't have to post everything. I have to post what is the best video that I can do? What is the best quote I can do? What is the best picture I can do? And do that in the days that I'm consistent. Now, I don't want to create every single day. So what I'm going to do, I'll create one of those days then I'll use user-generated content where I'm looking at things that are happening in my niche, in my market, or something that's trending, and I'll repost that on my page and give my perspective on it. That takes another day of my consistency. Then I may do a reaction, right, on like a remix, uh, a duet or something. That's a post right there. Then I'll repurpose something that didn't work maybe a month ago, two months ago, and repost it there, or I may look at my analytics. This really worked. I know I can repost that again, cool, boom. And then maybe at the end of the week, I'll, I'll create content again. Meaning the weight of creating content every single day is off me. I only have to do it once or twice if I feel like it. And the rest I'm strategizing on what is happening in my market. What have I posted the month, two, three months ago that I could reuse again? What, what is trending that I can do, and that's it. So it's not putting so much pressure on the content or what we have to create every single day. It's just being strategic with what's happening on social media. Okay, I, so Dante said something, and I let it slide, and you said it again, okay. and now I gotta say something because I don't like it. You all said uh, quality over quantity. And I don't necessarily agree. We know. Because, are you coming at my quality? No, 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 Quantity over quality. What are you thinking? Uh, quality. Quality? Yes. And I'll give you why. So. Yes, that's why they didn't ask me to speak on social media. I'm just asking the questions. That's cool. <laughs> Here's, so, okay, can I defend my point? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So I think, one, the only way to get to quality or even you understanding what quality is, is to create a whole bunch of quantity so you get in your bag, you kind of understand what works and what doesn't work. And my, uh, when I tell my community, I'm like, yo, just post whatever. Just if you can, let's work on the consistency of posting whatever you can post that's obviously targeted towards your, your genre or yeah. your niche. Um, but I think through that process, you can look at it and say, okay, well, let me 
let me step up the quality a little bit. Let me make my messages a little more succinct. But if they're focused on quality for so long, they won't ever get any content up. And you are saying that it's not about the amount of time on YouTube. It's like, yo, let's get a thousand posts up and let's see what happens. So, so, so I it. agree with you in the very beginning. Give a round of applause for agreeing with me. Come on, we out here. I won. To an extent. I agree with you to an extent. Let me, let me break it down. Think about it for, for anything as far as work or even music. You got to put yourself out there as much as you can to figure out your voice, your tone, your audience. So, yes, you're putting out as much. That doesn't mean put out trash content just to be there, right? Now, you're different. We all know that your, your quality is up there. So you can't be like, I'm putting out all this content and it looks mediocre. But I did. So I did. When I started my podcast, it was one camera. I'm sitting yes. there by myself. Yes. Rashad and Troy had iPhones. What kind of camera was it? What kind of? Okay, so they, uh, enough said. Okay, all right. So yes. So in the beginning, we do, and then once we have that data, now we can focus on tailoring our content specifically to our audience. So where I can post one time, and I know exactly that my audience needed it that day. Where some people are still trying to figure it out or trying to get the numbers and the metrics. It's like, okay, I'm gonna post four times a day, and one or two of them is going to hit. I'd rather post one time and that's going to hit than three, four times and only one of them is going to hit because that's going to mess with my mental. Absolutely mm, that's it will. That's good. Chris? When you focus on quality, it has to be premium. So if you're not going to be consistent, well, as long as you uphold your promise that you made, if you're saying that, okay, every week I'm going to post three times a day, I mean, three times a week, you just have to keep that consistency up. That's still a form of consistency. So I'll give you an example. High Level Conversations is one of the hottest shows out right now. Keys doesn't post every Sunday, but when he does, it's a milli because it's great quality. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we get so caught up with how the, the content looks when it's, the message is more important than the content. So if the quality of the message is important, it's more impactful than the quality of the, what the video looks like. That's why when they started from the uh, iPhones, the message was powerful. It's not the red eye cameras that they use now that's 30,000 per camera. It's the message. So, they, and they already had their earned experience. It's not like they started off when they were 12 years old. They've already lived a full life. So he came in a teacher, so he already knew how to educate. He came in um, a financial advisor, so already was in finance and they grew up in hip hop culture. So when you take that time to build a product, if it doesn't, like the packaging isn't as important as what's inside of the, the product. Okay, Dante, talk to me. <laughs> so I, I agree with you as well, David. Thank you. Give me a round of applause. I got a convert. <laughs> I converted him. <laughs> I don't want this to go over anybody's head because there's different levels of where everybody's at on their content journey. If you want to put out one quality piece of content or you want to put out five different pieces of quality of content. You can make it happen. But focus on building out a content library and figure out where you can distribute the content. A lot of us think we only have to post something one time and that's it. That's not the truth. If you look at shows like Family Guy, it's been distributed and syndicated to so many different television networks. And Simpsons, we've been watching it for many, many years. Think the same thing about your content. If it reached 100,000 people, great. There's still billions of people on these social media platforms. So post it again because odds are it's going to reach a totally different market of people. And it's going to, A, you're going to get more likes and engagements. B, you'll get more followers out of it. And now you don't know who those decision makers, when we talk about getting brand deals, who's seeing that piece of content for the first time. And we look at a YouTube view and we think that was only 100 people that viewed it. But how many times are we in a room where we got the TV on and there's five of us there? That could be multiplied. So you might have 500 or 5,000 views. Here's what I think too. Um, you can kind of see that there are different philosophies, but I'm here to tell you that there's not a right answer. Nope. There's not one right answer, okay? What I've done is work for me, Diane, say Chris, all of us, we've done something that works for us. But what you have to do is work, like do something that works for you. The objective of this panel isn't to say, um, what I should and should, shouldn't do. The objective is to give you tools. So, um, Nikki says the most important app is Notion. And let's say Dante says the most important app is ChatGPT. 
I think one of the issues we come across is we hear an expert say something and we say, okay, that's the answer. And then we hear another expert say something and we disregard the first answer as not being true because we're running off new information and then we get confused. Say confused. At, like we've been talking for almost an hour. Hopefully, hopefully, you throw away 95% of the stuff that was said here, you take 5% and you apply it to your life, and over the next six months, I promise you, you'll grow. But if you try to take everything, if you try to use every single app, every single strategy, you'll get confused and you'll be at square one next year. But we're not gonna be that, are we? Okay, good, good, good. I wanna, I wanna, um, I, there, there's a couple of things I wanna talk about, because I'm, I'm thinking about you all with these questions of, the, the, the nuances of social media. And I wanna talk about the, uh, what's it called? The bio, the bio area. What's that section called? Is it called bio the bio area? area? Bio okay, area. good. What should be on that? I wanna hear all of you all. Like, what, let's, what, what should that say? Because it seems important, right? It's the first thing people see. Yeah, it's the first impression. So my opinion on it is who do you serve and what are you gonna give value on, right? I'm, I don't care about the author, the, the entrepreneur, this, that, and third. That doesn't add value, right? So it's more of who you are, who do you serve, what is the solution that you, you solve? Because now I know exactly why I'm following you. Okay, cool. And if you can add, how many times are you going to post showing that consistency, also giving a commitment to yourselves, right, of like, okay, I know I'm gonna get daily this, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this comes out, or every Tuesday, Wednesday, my podcast comes out, however it is. But in the bio, we need to know why we need to follow you. So however you wanna word that, I think that should be in there. Gotcha, okay, so for the people that got um, God's girl, or just yeah, random weird take stuff. Out. Take, no, 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 take that out. That, that's <laughs> that's why right now they got God's girl on your, that's yeah, no, your whole no, no, bio. That's, that's important to you, that's not important to the audience. And we're creating our brands and our social media for who we serve and not for us. That's good. All right, so talk to me about the bio section. Give me your philosophy on that. Uh, it should be very clear. Um, it shouldn't be a whole bunch of stuff going on, a whole bunch of like, I'm this, I'm that. It should be very clear and concise. When people go onto your page, it's more so like the first impression, how can you benefit me? You shouldn't look at it as like, oh, this is my page. I'm going to tell all these things about you. But if you say, hey, I help people build on social media, you may want to get your page built so you'll follow. But if you say uh, like something else, this is more so like about you, you'll have less likely of people to click and follow you. So nobody cares that somebody's a mother of three. Husband, father, vegan. No. No? You okay. have a personal right. page. But <laughs> nobody cares. Okay, how many people got mother and some in your bio right now? Raise your hand. I see you. Okay, talk to me, bio section. Like Chris said, it's the first impression. Depending on who you wanna see your page, whether it's new followers or brands, you should tell exactly who you are, what you do, and where you live. Because if I'm a brand looking at your page, if you're ATL based, cool, now I can activate you as a creator when we have events, and I can add you to our roster of creators who I know that live in this area. How many of you are changing a bio right now? How many of you are looking at it right now? <laughs> That's good. All right, we got a couple, we got a couple more minutes. Um, another part I want to talk about, uh, I hate we're running out of time, the caption. How are you approaching the captions? Let me start with you, Dante. The captions of the video? The caption, yeah. So the caption, we're going to post a video, and you got to write something, right, that adds context to the video. How many people just, you're real lazy with the caption. You almost leave it blank, but you got to put something there, so you put something real quick just to get it up. How many people do that? Okay. So how should we approach this caption? Every platform now is keen onto one thing, and that's SEO. If you don't know what that means, that's search engine optimization. This means that when you go onto Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, you can search up vegan. You can search up personal trainer, and it will pop up because of what you have in your caption. So the first line should be your headline. What's gonna catch people's attention? Sometimes it's maybe a bar from Drake, and we can pull from that because people will like your post just based off of that first line in your caption. If that's you and you're the caption god, I'm all for it. That's my girl, I, I can't do that, honestly. For me, I'm always figuring out what the content is about. It's the first line that I put in there so people know exactly, just in case they skip past it. Then it might be 
my at. And you might be like, why would you put your at in your caption? Well, some people are seeing it on the explore page for the first time and they won't click your name just based off of that. So if you can somehow create more real estate that people can follow you, that's something that I end up doing as well. And then a little bit of hashtags. People say that hashtags don't work, but that's false. Meta found me because I put hashtag shot on iPhone and my video was the first video that popped up on there. And that's how they found me to work with them. Good. So talk to me. Captions. How are you approaching it? Yeah, I'll start back off with the, um, when you first start your caption, what you want to do is kind of put context of the video inside of the, cap the caption. So instead of using the same headliner that uh, is in the video, I kind of try to pull from whatever stuff is said or the type of vibe or the, uh, that I want the post to have. And then when you deal with hashtags, I don't like to do hashtags that are like a billion, like a uh, hundred million. I like to try to stay like under five million, under one million, so it could still like pop up and I could be like the top rated there. Um, well, you say the numbers because you put hashtags in and it'll show you how many people are using the hashtag. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it's like if, if it's a billion people, like it's very hard for yours to go to the very top because it's like way more real estate you're fighting for. So you could put like one that's very high, but I'll try to like uh, very niche down and be kind of specific about it, right? So like um like for Ash, I always put abundance is your birthright because that's his saying. So it's like less than ten thousand there. So if somebody is like looking for that, that'll pop up. And then you also kind of have like the bigger uh, hashtags. But I don't like to go over like a million because you lost. Good. Fifteen seconds. Yeah. So it's just the backstory of what you're posting. If you post a picture, we don't know what that is about, really, right? It's we're assuming. So we're taking away the assumption of what we want them to learn, what they want to get motivated, what we want them to entertain them. So give the backstory and then also always add a call to action, whether it's click the link in your bio, whether it is do something, give them direction, but then also ask them a question, create the engagement. In every single caption, you should be like, so what do you think about this? What did this do? How did this make you feel? Things like that, because that will create the engagement. Good, good. Hey, let everybody know how to find you, Nikki. Uh, at this is Nikki's everywhere, and then my booth under the 500 sign. Go over there, uh, deeper than the brand. I'll be there. I'll be chilling with y'all. There you go, Chris. Talk to me. Uh, Chris, the content king on all social media platforms. You can find us at booth 618. We're giving out free social media audits. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You guys can find me everywhere on social media at Dante Catlett especially on LinkedIn. One thing we didn't get to talk about was activating LinkedIn. Everybody get on there and connect Bad. with the brand Bad. and marketing directors because that's where the money is at and that's where the attention is that nobody is currently at. I love it. Uh, add a part of your notes, okay? Your notes. Social Proof Podcast. Are you subscribed? Are you subscribed? Social Proof Podcast? No. And Nikki and Moose well, Podcast. Write it down. And Nikki and Moose Podcast. Social Proof Podcast. Listen, that has been our time. Please. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.